Welcome, dear listeners, to another riveting episode of our podcast. Today, we're embarking on a journey that transcends time and space, a journey that takes us back to a pivotal moment in human history, the Apollo moon landing. On July 20th, 1969, the world stood still as astronaut Neil Armstrong descended the ladder of the lunar module and took his first steps on the moon. His words, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, echoed around the globe, marking a monumental achievement in our quest to explore the cosmos. This event, broadcast live to millions of people worldwide, was not just a scientific triumph, but a testament to human courage, ingenuity, and the relentless pursuit of knowledge. However, this historic event also sparked a wave of skepticism and conspiracy theories that persist to this day. Some questioned the authenticity of the moon landing, suggesting it was an elaborate hoax staged by the United States government. These theories, while widely debunked, have added a layer of intrigue to the narrative of the moon landing. In this episode, we'll journey through the various stages of the Apollo mission. We'll explore the rigorous training that Armstrong and his crew underwent, the meticulous preparation for the moon landing, the journey to the moon, and the experiences on the lunar surface. We'll also delve into the skepticism that followed their return to Earth, debunking some of the most popular conspiracy theories and presenting the evidence that supports the moon landing. We'll also discuss NASA's continued exploration of the moon, the theories about extraterrestrial assistance, and the impact of the moon landing on science, technology, and society. We'll conclude with a look at the future of space exploration, discussing the potential of using resources like helium-3 as a new source of fuel, so, sit back, relax, and join us on this journey through time and space as we unravel the story of the Apollo moon landing. It's a tale of human achievement and perseverance, a story that continues to inspire us to reach for the stars. Let's dive in. In the annals of human history, few names shine as brightly as that of Neil Armstrong. A man who dared to touch the stars, Armstrong's journey to the moon was not one that began with the launch of Apollo 11. No. It began years earlier, on Earth, with a training regimen so intense it would test the limits of even the most hardened adventurers. Imagine, if you will, being strapped and suspended at an angle, learning to walk along walls to mimic the microgravity conditions of the moon. This was not a task for the faint-hearted. It was a grueling exercise, a test of endurance and adaptability, pushing the boundaries of what the human body could withstand. But the trials didn't end there. Armstrong was subjected to a strict diet and sleep regimen, preparing him for the harsh realities of space, where meals were nothing more than dehydrated beef and vegetables stuffed into a package. The comforts of home, the simple pleasure of a hot meal, were luxuries that would be far beyond his reach. And then there was the survival training. In an era when space travel was still in its infancy, the approach was less about structured protocols and more about raw, primal survival. Armstrong was dropped into the desert, the jungle, the open sea, and the Arctic, with little more than his wits to keep him alive. It was a brutal, unforgiving regimen, a stark reminder of the harsh realities that awaited him in the unforgiving vacuum of space. Through all this, Armstrong persevered. He pushed through the pain, the exhaustion, the relentless grind of his training. He was driven by a dream, a vision of a man walking on the moon. And in the face of such determination, even the most daunting challenges could be overcome. Before the historic landing on the moon, Armstrong's preparation was as meticulous as it was exhaustive. His training took him to the depths of the Grand Canyon, where he studied rock samples to better understand the lunar geology he would encounter. He explored ancient volcano formations in the Nevada National Security Site, gaining insights into the geological processes that might have shaped the moon's surface. Armstrong's training also led him to the beautiful landscapes of Hawaii, where he investigated gas and lava vents, lava lakes, and pit craters. These experiences were not just academic exercises. They were crucial in preparing him for the unknowns of the lunar environment. On July 20, 1969, the day of the moon landing, Armstrong was given a hearty breakfast before blast-off. Steak, eggs, toast, juice, and coffee. This was a low-residue meal, designed to ensure he wouldn't have to go to the bathroom soon after. It was a small detail, but in a mission where every second counted, even the smallest details mattered. 
The journey to the moon took 109 hours and 42 minutes. The destination was an area called the Sea of Tranquility. The crew could have chosen other sites like the Ocean of Storms or the Central Bay, but the Sea of Tranquility was chosen for its good visibility, relative smoothness, and accessibility with as little propellant as possible. As Armstrong descended towards the moon's surface, he had to manually maneuver the spacecraft to avoid landing in a dangerous crater. He hovered for about a minute and a half, moving sideways until he found a safe spot to land. This was a moment of high tension, a testament to Armstrong's skill and composure under pressure. His successful landing was a triumph of human ingenuity and determination, setting the stage for one of the most iconic moments in human history. The journey to the moon, a staggering 240,000 miles away from Earth, was a feat of human ingenuity and technological prowess. It was a voyage that took Armstrong and his crew 109 hours and 42 minutes, a journey through the vast emptiness of space to a destination that had, until then, been the stuff of dreams and science fiction. The spacecraft, a marvel of engineering, was guided towards an area on the moon known as the Sea of Tranquility. This site was chosen not for its poetic name, but for its practical advantages. It offered good visibility, a relatively smooth surface, and was easily reachable with as little propellant as possible. The choice of landing site was a delicate balance of safety and scientific interest, a decision that would shape the course of the mission. As the lunar surface loomed closer, Armstrong took manual control of the spacecraft. At about 500 feet above the moon, he had to carefully maneuver the craft to avoid landing in a dangerous crater. For a tense minute and a half, he hovered, moving the spacecraft sideways until he found a suitable spot to land. The moment the lunar module touched the surface, Armstrong radioed back to Mission Control in Houston, Texas, delivering the now famous message, the Eagle has landed. It was a moment of triumph, a testament to human courage and ingenuity, but it was just the beginning. Ahead lay the first steps on an alien world, a moment that would forever change our understanding of what is possible. The lunar module had landed, but the most iconic moment was yet to come. As Armstrong descended the ladder of the lunar module, a television camera attached to the craft recorded his progress. This footage was transmitted back to Earth, where hundreds of millions of people watched with bated breath. At precisely 10.56 p.m. EDT on July 20th, 1969, Armstrong placed his foot on the lunar soil. The world watched as he took that first historic step, forever imprinting the human presence on the moon. His words echoed across the globe, a profound statement that captured the magnitude of the moment. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. The lunar surface beneath his feet was fine and powdery, as Armstrong later described it. Yet despite the alien environment, he had no difficulty moving around. The gravity on the moon is only about one-sixth of Earth's, a fact that added a sense of surrealism to the scene. Here was a man, walking on the moon, as if it were the most natural thing in the world. About 20 minutes after Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, another member of the crew, joined him on the lunar surface. The world watched as the two astronauts explored this new world, their every move broadcast to millions of viewers back on Earth. It was a moment of unity, a moment when all of humanity could share in the sense of wonder and achievement. The first steps on the moon were not just a triumph for Armstrong and Aldrin, they were a triumph for us all. On the moon, Armstrong and Aldrin experienced a world unlike any other. The lunar surface was described as fine and powdery, a stark contrast to the familiar terrain of Earth. Despite the alien environment, the astronauts moved with relative ease, adapting to the moon's lower gravity, which is only about one-sixth of Earth's. One of the most unexpected experiences was the smell. If Armstrong had walked on the moon without his helmet, he would have been met with a peculiar odor, somewhat musty and sulfuric. This scent clung to his suit and permeated the lunar module when he returned, spreading throughout the cabin. Armstrong likened it to wet fireplace ashes or the air after a fireworks show. It was a sensory detail that brought the alien environment of the moon into stark reality. During their time on the lunar surface, which lasted a little over two hours, Armstrong and Aldrin set up various devices. These included instruments to measure the exact distance from the moon to Earth and to detect moonquakes and potential meteor impacts. 
Each task was a crucial part of their mission, contributing valuable data to our understanding of the moon. But perhaps the most profound experience was the simple act of being there, of standing on the surface of another world. Looking up at the Earth from the moon, seeing our planet hanging in the vast expanse of space must have been a humbling and awe-inspiring sight. It was a reminder of our place in the universe, a testament to our potential, and a symbol of the exploratory spirit that defines us as a species. Despite the monumental achievement of the moon landing, not everyone was convinced. In the aftermath of the event, skepticism began to take root. Some people found it hard to believe what they saw on their television screens. The footage, while impressive, seemed too good to be true to some, sparking theories that the landing was simply staged, like a scene on a movie set. Others questioned the technological capabilities of the time. Could we really have developed the technology to send humans all the way to the moon in the 1960s? Even years later, some people remained skeptical, despite the thousands of pieces of evidence that support the reality of the lunar landings. Some theories suggested that the Apollo landing had taken place not on the moon, but in a desert in Arizona or Nevada. Some believed that the United States had faked the moon landing to win the space race against other countries. Others thought the moon landing was a diversion, a spectacle designed to distract people from real problems on Earth. These theories, while widely debunked, persist to this day. They serve as a reminder of the power of skepticism and the importance of critical thinking. But they also underscore the extraordinary nature of the moon landing, an achievement so incredible that some found it hard to believe. The skepticism surrounding the moon landing has given rise to a number of theories, each more imaginative than the last. However, these theories often overlook or misinterpret the evidence. Let's take a moment to debunk some of the most common ones. One theory suggests that the absence of stars in the photos taken on the moon is evidence of a hoax. However, this can be explained by the camera settings used. The lunar surface was brightly lit by the sun, so the camera's aperture and shutter speed were set to capture this brightness. These settings made the faint stars in the dark sky invisible in the photos. Another theory points to the appearance of crosshairs behind objects in some photos. Critics argue that this indicates the photos were doctored. However, this effect is actually due to overexposure. The bright white objects can wash out the thin black crosshairs in the photos, making it appear as if the crosshairs are behind the objects. Yet another theory suggests that the flag planted by the astronauts fluttered in the breeze, which should be impossible in the vacuum of space. In reality, the flag was held up by a horizontal rod, and the apparent fluttering was caused by the astronauts' movements as they planted the flagpole into the lunar soil. These are just a few examples of the many theories that have been debunked over the years. The evidence supporting the moon landing is extensive and robust, from the 8,400 photos taken during the mission to the moon rocks brought back to Earth. The moon landing was a monumental achievement, a testament to human ingenuity and determination, and it stands up to even the most rigorous scrutiny. The evidence supporting the moon landing is extensive and compelling. It spans across multiple disciplines and forms of documentation, providing a robust case for the reality of this historic event. One of the most tangible pieces of evidence is the 842 pounds of lunar rock and soil samples brought back to Earth by the Apollo missions. These samples have unique characteristics that could not be replicated on Earth. They contain isotopes that are not found naturally on our planet and show signs of exposure to cosmic rays, which are much more prevalent on the moon due to its lack of a protective atmosphere. In addition to the lunar samples, there are over 8,400 high-resolution photos taken during the Apollo missions. These photos show the astronauts on the lunar surface, the American flag they planted, and the scientific instruments they set up. The photos also show footprints and tire tracks that match the movements of the astronauts and the lunar rover. The moon landing was also recorded in audio and video. The footage shows the astronauts moving in a way that is consistent with the moon's lower gravity. The audio recordings capture the conversations between the astronauts and mission control, providing a real-time narrative of the mission. Furthermore, the landing sites of the Apollo missions have been imaged by subsequent lunar missions. The Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, launched in 2009, has taken high-resolution photos of the landing sites, showing the descent stages of the lunar modules and the tracks left by the astronauts. 
The evidence for the moon landing is not just limited to these physical artifacts. The mission was tracked by multiple independent organizations, including the Parkes Observatory in Australia and the Jodrell Bank Observatory in the UK. These organizations confirmed the spacecraft's trajectory to the moon and back. The Apollo missions marked the beginning, not the end, of our exploration of the moon. Since those historic landings, we have continued to study our celestial neighbor with an array of sophisticated instruments and missions. One of the most significant of these is the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, or LRO. Launched in 2009, the LRO has been mapping the lunar surface in unprecedented detail. Its high-resolution images have provided valuable data on the moon's topography, temperature, and chemical composition. These images have also captured the landing sites of the Apollo missions, showing the descent stages of the lunar modules and the tracks left by the astronauts. In addition to the LRO, several other countries have launched their own lunar missions. These include China's Chang'e program, India's Chandrayaan missions, and the European Space Agency's Smart One. Each of these missions has contributed to our understanding of the Moon, providing valuable data on its geology, environment, and potential resources. The continued exploration of the Moon is not just about scientific discovery. It's also about preparing for the future. The Moon is seen as a stepping stone for further space exploration, a place where we can test technologies and strategies for missions to Mars and beyond. It's also seen as a potential source of resources, such as water ice and helium-3, which could be used for life support and energy production. In short, our exploration of the Moon is far from over. It continues to be a source of fascination and discovery, a place where we can learn more about our own planet and the broader universe. While the majority of people accept the moon landing as a human achievement, there are some who believe that extraterrestrial beings played a role in the mission. These theories suggest that aliens either assisted in the moon landing or had some form of contact with the astronauts during their mission. One theory suggests that extraterrestrials provided technological assistance to NASA, enabling us to make the giant leap to the moon. Proponents of this theory often point to the rapid advancements in technology during the 1960s as evidence of alien intervention. However, these advancements can also be attributed to the intense focus on research and development during the space race. Another theory proposes that the astronauts encountered extraterrestrial beings or artifacts on the moon. Some claim to see unusual shapes or structures in the photos taken during the Apollo missions interpreting these as signs of alien life or activity. However, these claims often rely on blurry images or misinterpretations of natural lunar features. While these theories are intriguing, it's important to note that there is no credible evidence to support them. The moon landing was a human achievement, made possible by the dedication and ingenuity of thousands of people. After their historic mission on the moon, Armstrong and Aldrin, along with their fellow astronaut Michael Collins, embarked on the journey back to Earth. The return trip was just as perilous as the journey out, requiring precise calculations and careful maneuvering to re-enter Earth's atmosphere safely. Upon splashdown in the Pacific Ocean, the astronauts were immediately placed in quarantine. This was a precautionary measure designed to protect against the possibility that the astronauts had brought back harmful lunar pathogens. While we now know that the moon is devoid of life, at the time, scientists could not be certain. The quarantine period lasted for 21 days. During this time, the astronauts were kept in a specially designed Airstream trailer, where they were monitored for any signs of illness. They were visited by President Richard Nixon and debriefed by NASA officials, all while remaining in isolation. Despite the discomfort and inconvenience, the astronauts took their quarantine in stride. They spent their time exercising, playing games, and writing reports about their mission. They were also given a window to the outside world, where they could watch the sun rise and set. Finally, on August 10, 1969, the astronauts were released from quarantine. They were given a clean bill of health, having shown no signs of any lunar pathogens. Their return to normal life was celebrated with parades and public appearances, but their journey was far from over. The impact of their mission would continue to be felt for years to come, shaping our understanding of the moon and our place in the universe. The moon landing inspired a generation of scientists, engineers, and astronauts, sparking a renewed interest in space exploration, 
It led to advancements in technology, some of which have found their way into our everyday lives. For example, the development of the integrated circuit, a key component of modern electronics, was accelerated by the needs of the Apollo program. The mission also had a profound cultural impact. It was a unifying moment, one that brought people together across national and cultural boundaries. The image of a human walking on the moon, broadcast to millions of people around the world, was a powerful symbol of what we can achieve when we work together. The moon landing also had geopolitical implications. It marked a significant victory for the United States in the space race, a competition with the Soviet Union for dominance in space exploration. It was a demonstration of technological prowess and a source of national pride. But perhaps the most enduring impact of the moon landing is the sense of possibility it instilled. It showed us that even the most audacious dreams can be realized, that the boundaries of our world are not fixed. It reminded us that we are explorers, capable of reaching beyond our own planet in our quest to understand the universe. The moon landing was more than just a moment in history. It was a catalyst for change, a milestone in our journey as a species. Its impact continues to be felt today, shaping our aspirations and our vision for the future. As we reflect on the Apollo moon landing, we are reminded of the power of human curiosity and determination. From the intense training that Neil Armstrong underwent, to the meticulous preparation for the mission, the journey to the moon, and the experiences on the lunar surface, Every aspect of the mission was a testament to human ingenuity and resilience. Despite the skepticism and conspiracy theories that arose in the aftermath, the evidence supporting the moon landing is extensive and robust. The lunar rock samples, the thousands of photos, the audio and video recordings, and the continued exploration of the moon all stand as testament to this monumental achievement. The moon landing was not just a moment in history, but a catalyst for change. It sparked advancements in technology, inspired generations of scientists and explorers, and changed the way we see ourselves and our place in the universe. It was a unifying moment, a shared experience that transcended national and cultural boundaries. As we look to the future, the moon landing serves as a reminder of what we can achieve when we dare to dream. It stands as a beacon of our potential, a symbol of our enduring spirit of exploration, as we continue to push the boundaries of our knowledge and explore new frontiers, we carry with us the legacy of that one small step, that one giant leap for mankind. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.